Hello and welcome. My name is Pradeep Sharma and I will talk about the routing protocol called EIGRP which we have out there. So first of all EIGRP stands for Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol which is a Cisco proprietary protocol. So when I say it is a Cisco proprietary protocol, I really mean that you have to have all Cisco routers in your network if you want to run EIHRP in your network. So we had one more routing protocol called IGRP, which was Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, and Cisco did the enhancement of IGRP and they made it EIGRP now. The problem with IGRP was that it was very slow to converse. So now we have we have EIGRP, which is fast to converse and it has all the possible features of a distance vector routing protocol and a link state routing protocol so what do I mean by list a distance vector routing protocol a distance vector routing protocol is a protocol uh, in which a router will only know what their neighbors has told them so a router will not have the entire picture of your whole network but it will simply believe what what its neighbor is going to tell him so if I, if if i need to show you this then i can i can show you with this diagram so let's say we have this network 1 out here and we have few routers to reach there from routers 1 perspective router 1 is only going to believe what router 2 will tell him i mean this router the router number one has two possible paths to reach to a network one out there so we are like uh, so router number one can go via router number two or router number three router number two also has two possible paths to reach this network here which is we are router number four and we are router number five router number one will not have any idea about these possible paths which we have out there so router number one will say yeah I mean I have two possible paths to reach there and and this is what my router number two will tell me but I don't have any idea if, if I have more paths than the road so think of a distance vector routing protocol as a road sign I mean they know how to get there but they do not have the whole picture of the network where a link state routing protocol let's say OSPF every single router will have the same roadmap of the network so router number one will know that okay this router also has two possible paths to get there and it will have the information about the all possible links to reach to a particular network where in, in a distance vector routing protocol it will only believe what their neighbors has told them so so that's what the uh, distance vector routing protocol means and EIGRP is a distance vector routing protocol which we have Cisco proprietary it uses dual algorithm or diffusing algorithm which is used to ensure that a given route is recalculated globally whenever it might cause a routing loop it responds to changes in the routing topology and dynamically adjusts the routing table of the router automatically it is also used to find out the best path to reach a particular network so if a router has two possible paths to get a network it has to select one best path to get there so every routing protocol has a different way to select the best path if, if it has two possible paths to get somewhere like in the RIP world it will use the hop count which is simply the number of routers it, it has to cross to reach a particular network but EIHRP uses a composite metric which is the combination of bandwidth and delay so if a router has two possible paths the deal algorithm will find out that which path is the best path and which path must go into the routing table because uh, that's what the best path which will go in the routing table so, so that's the dual algorithm it also supports unequal cost load balancing now other routing protocols can simply support the equal cost load balancing which is like if, if a router has two possible paths to get somewhere then it will use both the paths at the same time to get there but if you have like different bandwidth links from from a router then you can possibly say hey use link one better than link two because it might be your link number one has a higher bandwidth as compared to link two so so you can simply configure unequal cost load balancing with EIGRP which will tell EIGRP to do load balancing based on the bandwidth where if if a link has higher bandwidth you can send like let's say you can send every two packets on that link and then you can send one packet on the downlink so EIGRP is the only routing protocol in the world which can support unequal cost load balancing all other routing protocols can only support 
equal cost load balancing not the unequal cost load balancing so next is EHRP has flexibility in summarization which is awesome like when you when you move to the OSPF world like open shortest path first which we which we have a routing protocol which is a link state routing protocol you'll find out that there are there, there are some places where you can do summarization but you cannot do summarization on any router where, wherever you want but with EIHRP you don't have that foundation of, of doing the summarization I mean you can go on any router and you can simply do summarization and that will work perfect so EIHRP is so flexible in summarization fast convergence so the hello timer of EIHRP is 5 seconds so every 5 seconds the EIHRP routers will send hello messages to each other to make sure that the, the neighbors are alive and, and they, they, they will send updates to, to send the routing table so it, it is very fast to converge when a primary link goes down so if you have like two links and one link is your primary link and second link is, is your secondary link if the primary link will go down the routing protocol which is EIHRP is very fast to move to the secondary path and reach to a particular destination so, so that's we have the fast convergence it is also called the advanced distance vector routing protocol or hybrid routing protocol it is it is called hybrid because it has the features of both a distance vector routing protocol and a link state routing protocol like it is it is as fast as a link state routing protocol is it is uh, it can support unequal cost load balancing it can support authentication summarization VLSM all, all those cool features which EIHRP can support and it is it is so simple to configure also as as same as the distance vector routing protocols are like RIP and it also uses the same loop prevention mechanism which a distance vector routing protocol uses like split horizon poison reverse uh, hop count so so trigger updates so all, all these kind of features EIHRP uses all these kind of uh, features so it means that EIHRP has the features of both a routing uh, both a distance vector routing protocol and a hybrid routing protocol which we have uh, out there so so that's why it is called the hybrid because it can support both the link state and the uh, distance vector routing protocol features it keeps backup path in the topology table so EIHRP actually keeps the table so it has three main tables which we are going to discuss in the next slide so it has the the first of all it has the neighbor table which is simply the list of neighbors from a router's perspective so if a router has two neighbors or three neighbors you, you can you can uh, show you can look on it with the show IP IJP neighbors command and it, it is simply the list of all the possible neighbors which you have and then you have this this topology table which is a list of all the possible paths to reach a particular destination so so that's that's what the topology table is so it will keep keep all the possible paths to reach to a particular destination now inside the topology table EIHRP will say okay this is my primary path and then we have some secondary path also which is the backup path so technically the primary path is called the successor where the backup path is called feasible successor now EIHRP packets so EIHRP uses five different different packet types one is hello second is update query reply and acknowledgement hello is simply used to make the neighbor relationship so if two routers in the EIHRP world want to become neighbors then they, they have to send this hello message and, and they will say hey hello are you there and and other router will respond to the hello if they match the uh, same criteria as like if they have the same autonomous system if, if they are in the uh, same key values if they have the same authentication then the, they, they can become neighbors so, so that's what the hello is used for it is used for to to make the neighbor relationship update update is used to send the routing updates about the all the possible networks which a router knows about query uh, when a primary link, link goes down and if a router does not have a backup path in that case a router will send a query message to its neighbors uh, and query message simply means that hey do you have a backup path I, I, I just lost my primary path so query is is basically to ask whether you have a backup path or not reply is the query is the reply of your your query message acknowledgement is the acknowledgement of your EIHRP packets now as I told you that EIHRP maintains three types of table so here we have the neighbor table which is a list of all the possible neighbors topology table which is a list of all the possible paths and the routing table which is a list of the best paths and now a few terms to remember 
uh, as I told you, successor is the best path in the EHRP world. So feasible successor is the backup path. So if, if a router has two possible paths to reach to a particular destination, it is uh, with the help of the metric calculation a router is going to choose whether which which path should i take to reach a particular destination which means that it will look on the metric and the metric is a combination of bandwidth and delay so uh, if, if we need to look on the same diagram which we have here let's say this router has two possible paths to reach to a particular destination but this router will choose route number one will choose one best path to get to a network one so let's say the, the metric here is 100 according to the calculation of of the uh, EIJP metric and, and then we have this metric which is 50 so less is better in the EIJP world so this path is going to be the best path or I, I can call it the primary path or technically it is called the successor which we have this path is called feasible successor or which is the backup path now so once the primary will go down EIJP will automatically choose the backup path to reach to a particular destination which is destination 1 here so so and it happens so fast so so that's the successor and the feasible successor which we have so successor is the best path where feasible successor is the backup path which we have and the topology table will keep the information about the primary path or the successor and the backup path as well where the routing table will keep the information about the best path only so that's the successor and feasible successor now the next term to remember is the the feasible distance or FD now feasible distance is the total metric from router number one to reach to a particular network now let's say that if every link costs like 10 plus 10 plus 10 now let's say that the metric to, to reach network one is 10 from here it's 10 now if I need to calculate from routers one perspective the feasible distance from router number one to reach a network one is like 100 plus 10 and plus 10 so it will be like 120 so it is the total metric from a router to reach a particular destination and the advertised distance which is also called the reported distance is the distance from your neighbor to reach to that particular network now from R1's perspective, to reach to, to the network 1, the feasible distance was 120, where the advertised distance will be from router 1 because router number 2 is the neighbor of router number 1, so the advertised distance will be 10 plus 10 is equal to 20. Now, there is a rule in EIJRP that to become the feasible successor, your AD value must be less than the FT value of the successor which is like if the the FT value of the successor is 120 and we got the AD value 20 so 20 is less than 120 so you are eligible to become the feasible successor if anyhow the this rule does not go ahead then you are not eligible for the feasible successor or you're not eligible for the backup path in the topology table so, so that's the term to remember which is the successor and the feasible successor which we have so now the next is the active and the passive active is bad where passive is good so if you see active state in in front of any network in the topology table that simply means that router is actively trying to find out the best path to reach that network but we are not getting that Passive means everything is stable and everything is working fine. So we need to see passive in the topology table every single time whenever we put show IP RJP topology command there. Now some, some basic rules which are very important from the troubleshooting point of view that if two routers wants to successfully up successfully want to become the EIJRP neighbors then they they must have all these things same they, they must be in the same autonomous system number which is a number which you will define when you configure EIJRP on a router so uh, autonomous system is is a group of routers under one administrative overhead so EIJRP uses this concept of autonomous system so you have to define a number it can be any number from 1 to 65,535 uh, so we'll define it uh, they must have same k values so k values 
I, or you can you can call it the the, the metric of EIJP like we have K1, K2, K3, K4, and K5. So EIJP in EIJP you must have like all say same key values there. Passive interface should not be there. So if if you are going to make the neighbor relationship between two routers and if you configure a, a serial interface as a passive interface, that is not simply going to work because a passive interface means th that a router will stop sending hello messages out of that interface which will configure passive in EIJP world. So you have to make sure that between your routers you don't configure an interface which is a passive interface. Uh, they must have the same authentication. If, if router number one is using the password Cisco, if router number two is using some different password then there will be authentication mismatch and two routers are not going to become neighbors. They must have a network statement for a network. So so if like if uh, if, if two routers are on network 192.168.1.0 then they must have the same network statement out there to become the neighbors. Now at last we will uh, I'm just going to show you a topology here which I have created in GNS3 so I have these three routers router number 1 2 and 3 uh, they they all are connected and they are running EIHRP 100 so I just want to show you a few commands to verify EIHRP and and how do you configure it quickly so so let's go down to number 1 and let me just show you here show IP protocol commands so show IP protocol is showing me that I'm running EIJP 100 which is the autonomous system and I have all, all these key values which is K1, 1, K20, K31, K40 and K50 by default and I'm, I'm doing routing for these networks. So if I say show IP EIJP neighbors to see the neighbor table you can have a look that this router has two neighbors H stands for handle which is like simply the number of uh, neighbors which you have so I have two possible neighbors 192.168.2.2 and 192.168.1.1 this is the interface on which I have the neighbor relationship this is my hold down timer this is the smooth round trip time which is in milliseconds like how much time will, will it take for a packet to go and come back retransmission timeout which is like how uh, how much I need to wait before retransmitting a packet if, if, if the packet lost in the uh, on the way queue count how many packets are in queue it must be always zero and this is the EIJP sequence database the next command to verify is show IP EIJP topology which will show you the topology table of the EIJP so now you can say, say here passive A stands for active U is update and Q is query now every single network we need to see passive in front of that network so it, it, is, it is telling me that okay to reach to a network uh, 192.168.4.0 I have two successor in, it means I have two best path and the the feasible distance of that successor is 21 which is this one so, but I'm using this one as the best path so if I say show IP route I, I need to see this into the routing table so uh, you can verify it from there if, if I need to go to 192.168.4.0 slash 24 I'm going via 192.168.2.2 which is the successor or which is the best path out there so so these are the commands so so how do you configure it very simple you, you go to the global configuration mode you say configure terminal and then you say router space EIJP space and you mention a autonomous system whatever the autonomous system you want to be in now let's say 100 and then simply you put the network statement whatever the network you have like let's say 192.168.1.0 and 192.168.2.0 which we have now you can also disable the automatic summarization with the no auto summary command where EIJRP by default does automatic summarization but it's safe to disable automatic summarization because if you want to do summarization you can do it manually under the interface level if you want it so 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 this is it so i hope this has this has been informative to you and i would like to thank you for viewing it